you talk about what does freedom mean? Where does it start? Uh, freedom was there before the British got here. So that means we have to, in a way, also address like the the idea of Sierra Leone. Like, how did it come about? That it came about uh, as, and, and you could correct me, as this attempt by the British um, to deal with with their own problems around what did the descendants of slaves that are in, in Britain, and so we are going to go start a country for them, and then other freed slaves from the Americas also arrive there. So can you can you both maybe I know these are these are long complicated histories, but how much of that, how much of of, of what is involved in the founding of Sierra Leone, is also part of like what needs to be, if you want, if there was going to be like a some point a truth and recon, well I know there has been a truth and reconciliation commission of some sort, but if we if if there has to be a reckoning with the whole past, how much of that of the founding also needs to be part of the story of where does Sierra Leone begin and end? And some of the tensions that that also brought up is also here when we talk about it. Hmm. Well, I, so you're asking exactly our, how do we rectify all, all of Sierra Leone's past in order to move, to move hmm. forward? Well, we, I mean, we have to acknowledge all of it, right? And I think a lot of people just don't. Uh, <laughs> it's because Sierra Leone also had a large Yoruba presence. Um, it, it also, you know, it has that history of the, the undesirable Blacks coming from Nova Scotia. It has all of that. Um, but I think it goes back to people telling us who we were and then just over the years it being cast aside because we were dealing with so much else. So we have to make an effort to actually bring all of it back but do people care? So we have to figure out, you know, how to do that, how to make people actually want to care about their identities and want to care about this past. Because if they don't and it's not priority, then how are we ever really going to move forward? Uh, you know, I, the way I, I want to jump into this question, you know, I, you know, on, on such a day, you know, and we were talking about this, Sean and William, that, you know, I rather not speak about the British necessarily, but somehow it's unavoidable on such a day. Mm -hmm. And if we are going to speak about it, perhaps we should speak about it with a very astute observation of what was done and what kind of political uh, situation they left in this country that still exists, which is why we continue to have the problems we have. So there are several dates that are very important. In 1787, it's when the colony was founded for the free slaves to return, right? And so even the language that is used to express that says that the British merchant philanthropist. How are you a philanthropist and a, you know, <laughs> if you are you know, in the business of slavery? Let's look at that, right? So, but already there's a problem in the way they are presenting themselves uh, against the place they are going or the people they are bringing there, right? So then the second date is in 1808, that became a colony, which basically mm -hmm. landed, they went to the Timini chief and they asked, which they deceived the Timini chief and asked for a parcel of land that they then later on uh, made into a territory, right? Into a colony, basically for the, for the free slaves that, that were coming. And, and the problem that you mentioned they had in England that he wanted to rectify by taking them out there to, to deal with it, right? So then, uh, then in 1896, uh, the, 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 the people who are now in this colony were considered British subjects. So which were the free slaves that were, so which in, in effect they were working for the British uh, empire. And then the British decided that they could not maintain this financially, so they needed to go in the interior. So in 1896, then Sierra Leone, the rest of Sierra Leone became a protectorate. And these were protected persons by the British. So all of a sudden, we went from just a country that has an, an area that has its own history to now being protectorates of the British, right? And so what the, the, this legal distinction, this distinction is very important because then you have the Western area, which was the British colony, and then you have the British protector, which was the rest of the country. And there were two legal systems that dealt with that, these two areas. One were British subjects, the other ones were British protected persons. And so the economic model, everything that transpired was based on this. And even the idea of how paramount chiefs are formed and everything was based on the British being able to control everything 
you know? So to this day, that's a system we have in place. So which gives you a lot of indication of how Sierra Leone is to this day, where power is in the Western area, where access to resources is in the Western area, and the rest of the country continues to crumble to, so, to, to a large extent. You see what I mean? So until we are able to even look at this history from that point of view and realize the consolidation of power by the British Empire was to basically just get resources from inland into the country and take it out to the empire. And that still happens to some extent in the way the country, the political system is. So on this day, if we don't talk about that and challenge that and undo that and go back to the way things used to be, which were there was a more of a, of a, of a federalization of things. Mm -hmm. Politics was not concentrated in one area. It was everywhere. This is the old ancient African empire way of doing this. We already, people already knew there were political systems in place. So why don't we revisit that? Because clearly this one hasn't worked for us that was set up. <laughs> and so I don't know why we're still embracing it. Well, that's, that's kind of why I bring up, you know, the idea of the mindset in the country, because we have we can go back to the, the way things were in, ten, in terms of like how we ruled politically, gender roles and things like that. But do people actually want to? There are so many still, I mean, speaking honestly, if you go to Sierra Leone right now, there are a lot of still like colonial mindsets there. So we can keep talking about the history and what things were done to us, but it really is gonna take a certain point in time for us to be like, okay, this was our history. Now moving forward, you know, we need to change our thinking. We need to want more for ourselves. We need to want to return back to that. So that's why I think it's a mixture of like the education of who we are and who we were, but also like people really need to want it in order to have that change. And you, know, I, you know, I would jump, but I think the idea of, of, you know, I believe that because there was a, there was a way to capture the mind of, uh, you know, the person who was colonized, which was a deliberate move that was done, there's also a way to undo that, you mm -hmm. know? And I think it has to be a national effort. Mm -hmm. uh, and the way we undo that is from a very young age to begin to teach our children an idea of who, what, who they are, what their identity truly is, you know? And once that starts to happen, then people would have questions. For example, I'll tell you, I'm sure you, 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 you know this, uh, you know, like, um, in Sierra Leone, when you first start to go to school, which when I was a kid, I thought something was wrong with the song. There's a song that people sing, you know, uh, about Baibure, who was one of the guys who basically fought against mm -hmm. the British because the British had come and imposed a tax on people who were already living on the land. And it was called a hot tax war. And he basically went to the British governor at the time and said, listen, but what is this idea of tax? Can you explain to me? And the guy felt that he was too intelligent. He was going to teach this so-called native, as they called him, about taxation and said that, well, it's the idea that, you know, if you live on somebody's land, they need to pay taxes for you to be able to. And he said, well, in that, based on your explanation, shouldn't you guys be the ones paying taxes to us? Because you arrived on our <laughs> land. You know, why are we the ones, you know, supposedly have this burden of paying taxes to you? And obviously he thought he was a troublesome fellow. And then he mobilized an, an army and fought against the British for years, gave them hard time, did them one minute. But this is the story that I had to find out later, the depths of it. The one that is given right. to you mm -hmm. as a student in a Sierra Leone education is that Baibura was a warrior. He fought against the British, and the British make him surrender. And he says, Kotomarimu, which means in Timini, he says, I'm sorry, forgive me. So as a young person growing up in Sierra Leone, all of a sudden you feel an inferiority about who you are. Mm -hmm. This hero of yours begged even though he was fighting for his right, right? And as a kid, I knew that that story doesn't make sense because how is this guy who started a war against them for years, gave them a time, how does he only come and say now, oh, I'm so sorry, forgive me, you know? <laughs> so, you know, when people grow up with this kind of mindset, I told the story because it's important to understand the way the stories are told mm -hmm. to us and what we grew up believing about ourselves, about our identity as Sierra Leoneans, what it means, about how we even think about the future. You know, we are aspiring to an ideology that wasn't made in our favor at all. That is, that belittles us, that doesn't even consider our intelligence, our creativity, our ways of being, mm -hmm. or rather sets a standard that is unattainable 
because it, it doesn't feel natural to us. 